So, you know, in recent times how I've been inserting video from the actual film or movie or whatever of the toy that's going to be reviewed? That way I don't have to go through these big long descriptions of where they come from and how they act and blah, 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 things like that. You know, seeing is believing, see it for yourself, all that good stuff. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that for my Power Ranger Samurai Zord Builder system reviews because, well, I can download the videos and I can watch them, I just can't import them into Windows Movie Maker. So, believe me, it's not for lack of trying, it's just Windows Movie Maker. It's simple, it's easy to use, it's easy to learn, but sometimes it really pisses me off. So, um, yeah, and really Power Rangers Samurai, they don't really pay attention to the nitty-gritty details on things anyways, at least not compared to their Super Sentai counterparts. And so, with that little mini rant aside, the mecha for the Power Rangers Samurai series are known as Folding Zords. And this is the Lion Folding Zord, because these are samurai that we're talking about, and they use symbol power, which is imported from Japan, which is where the, the Power Rangers samurai come from. Um, obviously, their mecha are going to be inspired um, in a similar Japanese way as well. And so the Folding Zords were inspired by the art of folding paper known as origami. And you can see part of the, uh, um, what was it, the fire symbol that sits up here. There's the Power Ranger Samurai logo there, and also on both arms as well. The only possibility you get out of the Lang Folding Zord is that, and that is it. Now the legs over here can move, but it's because of transformation, so they don't bend in a realistic way. The arms can also move, but they snap to that position and that position strictly for transformation. So that's all you're going to get out of the Lion Folding Zord. Next up is the Dragon Folding Zord. For those of you who are wondering, these Zords are one of the very few occasions where Zords have actually been in scale to their on-screen counterparts. The Folding Zords actually truly are as big as these toys are. Like, they actually are this big, but it requires symbol power that the Power Rangers use in order to make them grow to gigantic size and become uh, mecha on their own, become giant robots on their own. Nice, gritty, detailed patterns on the side there. Head sculpt is also kind of nice. The only posability is right there. Here's the other thing, though, is that the head can go up and down because of transformation, but that's kind of it. It can also bend, transformation, and that's pretty much all you're going to get out of the Dragon Folding Zord. Next up is the Turtle Folding Zord, or as people like to call it, the Hockey Puck Zord, for obvious reasons. Not a lot of detail around the outside. Outer side, excuse me. Little fins go down and up. They ratchet a little bit, and um, if you put enough pressure on them, they can pop off. Getting them on. Might not be so easy. Nice, detailed surfaces underneath. Well, not there. Not there. I believe that is the kanji for the, the Japanese symbol for heaven or sky. Something like that. Again, nice textured pattern around there. So that's it for the hockey puck sword. Next up is the Bear Folding Zord. The only posability is right there. Hmm, looks like a bear to me. Again, the Power Rangers Samurai symbol right there, and on the other side as well. His legs are really hollow, so they don't offer up much detail. Caption information, or er, copyright information, well... And he has a hole in his butt. Not much on the top either. Like I said, the, the legs are hollow, unfortunately, so they don't give you a lot of detail. The legs can go back and forth like this. Unfortunately, that I don't really consider that posability. I suppose if he was swimming, if he was a polar bear, you know, maybe. Otherwise, the only posability you can really work with is the head, the jaw, and that's it for the bear folding zord. 
And finally, we have the ape folding zord. I like the details of the nose, the mouth, even the tiny little ear on either side. That's kind of cute. Rest of the detailing, eh, not so much. Again, really hollow arms. Power Ranger symbol right there above my finger. Monkey butt hole. Not quite sure what that thing is up there, but whatever. Tiny, tiny little feet. Doesn't offer up much, but there they are. Posability. This is really the only one you can actually pose with, just because of the transformation, really. The arms can ratchet every 45 degrees, including straight down. Now, while it is designed to balance like this on the ground, you can also open up the arms and make it lean downwards like this a little more. And because of the transformation, you can also make the arms fold outwards. They don't really ratchet, they're really loose, but uh, there it is. So that is it for the Ape Folding Zord. The transformation for the Samurai Megazord is a bit more involved than what we've been getting in the last few years. Thank goodness. By far, the Ape Folding Zord has the simplest transformation. You just fold up the arms and that's it. There is pretty simple. Fold up the legs on both sides. Fold up the head and that's it. The Dragon Folding Zord actually takes care of the accessories for the Semi Megazord, including the sword. And you push this button on the top and then you can wiggle out the... Come on, get out of there the helmet, and then you just complete it by folding it in half. I did say at the beginning that the transformation is more involved. That doesn't mean it's more complicated, it just means there's more things to do. By the way, I'm just going to comment on it right now, it is a pain in the ass to get these legs out of here again. Like I like how they fold up and all that, but you got to have fingernails. And I mean really have fingernails to open up these legs, just saying. See what's a good angle there. Not a good angle. That's a good angle. Take the whole body. Like that. And then again, fingernails required. Fold up the head. Like that. And then finally just start attaching things together. You're gonna take the helmet, stick it on there flip up the horns, and there you have the Samurai Megazord. We've had a lot of Megazords over the years that have claimed to be something, but they didn't really look like it. I mean, what the heck is a Zeo? Hmm, yeah, don't get that. What about a Turbo Zord? Well, okay, it's a bunch of trucks and SUVs and race cars and vans and whatevers, but, you know, it, it kind of made sense. There were other times, like the Storm Power Megazord, where it it looked crazy, but it looked really, really awesome, so you kind of ignored the fact that it was supposed to be based on ninjas, but they weren't really, but they kind of had some really kind of unique weapons that you were stored away really easily. A couple of years ago, we had the Mystic Titans, which were based off of mythological critters and animals and whatnot. But then, you know, at that same year, it was the fact that the Zords were actually the Rangers themselves, which was kind of bizarre, but kind of cool at the same time. And then in the mid-90s, we had stuff like the Shogun Megazord and the Ninja Megazord, which, how was the Ninja Megazord related to ninjas? I mean, it was, it was a bunch of animals, but I mean, Ninja? I didn't see it, did you? But Ninja? I uh, didn't really see that. So, please believe me when I say, this is one of the very few occasions where a Megazord's name has actually matched what the heck it looks like. It's the Power Ranger symbol again, and it's got these five kind of geometric shapes around the around the face. The face, by the way, uh, you can look at it independently there. I know it's a little fuzzy. It's kind of tiny, but uh, there it is. And that snaps easily enough. This is a little loose. I don't know why it goes all the way back like that, but whatever. <laughs> but this actually has the, uh, for lack of a better word, it has the aesthetic of a ja of Japanese samurai warrior. Well, except I don't know what these are. And I'm pretty certain they didn't have these unused pegs on either side, you know. But, for the most part, it just, it, 
it looks like a kind of what it claims to be a samurai warrior, which which, which is cool by the way. Not really so much in the back here. Some unseen detail here. Kind of like it how the uh, the ape and the turtle, their heads are kind of poking out in a weird way, and yet the lion, the bear, and the dragon are just kind of obviously sticking out the front. I kind of like to have seen the, the turtle and the ape sword's faces sticking out from somewhere else. Articulation is as follows. Typical deluxe transforming Megazord affair. Ratchets very nicely every 45 degrees. And because of, this is the Zord Builder system we're talking about here, these ratchet as well. Although it will not, A, both legs will not turn at the same time, and B, doesn't really balance when you turn one leg to the side or the other. You can, just it's, it's unstable, so it's safer to just pose it like that. And that's really the only posable letter you've got. However, the accessory, the only accessory it comes with is this very nice, uh, I've already forgotten the name of it, Samurai Megazord Sword, Saber, Katana, whatever it is. The reason I say it's nice is because, A, once again, they've got that, uh, I don't know what that symbol is, the Power Rangers symbol there, I guess. But in this case, they have simplified turtle, ape, looks like a rabbit on this side. It's a bear, dragon, and the lion folding zords represented along with some frilly, whatchamacallits here. The blade is made of PVC. I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't, of course. It can be held in other, either hand, but traditionally it's held in the right. Back to posability and articulation. Because of the transformation, you can get the arm to move and snap to every 45 degrees all the way around. Oh, shik, 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 sting. Now, with that said, there's one thing I want to bring up while I'm talking about articulation. This isn't, this isn't quite a rant yet, but I'll get to it. Traditionally, every single Megazord we've ever, ever had, the arms have gone straight up and down like this, okay? For whatever reason, and I don't know why, this is, this is just screwy on me, for whatever reason, the arms slip slightly backwards or slightly forward. It's not perfectly, it's, it's at a weird perpendicular kind of thing going on. Like, it should be parallel. Uh, I'm trying to get it to, yeah. Like, I have to force it, I have to go against the joint and then let go. You see, it's slightly off center. Now, the arms themselves, from here to here, it is 90 degrees. But if you turn the Megazord straight up and down, you can see... While the arms are 90 degrees to themselves and 45 degrees and whatever, to the rest of the Megazord, they're just screwy. You can never get the arms to go straight ahead. It will always be tilted slightly down or significantly upward, but never straight up. I don't get that. It's just, it's, it's, well, it's weird. And so that is it for the Samurai Megazord. See, can I get the whole thing in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, unfortunately, the shield, uh, the Megazord shield or whatever it is, is not included in the set. So, just going to have to live without that one, unfortunately. So, tell me, Ava, what is the difference between the Zord Builder System Samurai Megazord and its original Japanese counterpart, the DX Samurai Gatai Shinken O from the 2009 Super Sentai series Samurai Sentai Shinkenger? That's a mouthful for you. Well, that is a very good question. Unfortunately, it's a complicated answer because they're actually two completely different toys. There is nothing on here that was originally part of this back in 2009. And here it is, 2013, by the way. Some of the differences just in Megazord mode is that, and this is actually something a lot of people complain about, is the crown, the, the horns on the Shinkano, it was made of PVC and it was this golden coloring. However, it didn't have the... While it does have the spacing between the horns in the series, the toy version, for whatever reason, has a little... The gap is filled up with more plastic. On the Samurai Megazord, though, that is one thing that they kind of corrected by making it PVC rather than hard ABS plastic. The other big difference is that, well, you have the heat-in shield, which they removed this gimmick from the Zord Builder system because, well, it was easier not to make a ton of these and make each and every one unique. So, cost-cutting measure... 
they could have given us just a shield as is, even if it didn't come with the, the disc. They could have given us a stupid old black handled shield thing. Like, that would have been acceptable. The other thing you could do, I don't think they did this in the show, but definitely the toy could do it. You could attach the shield to the left arm. You could flip this out and peg it into there. The other thing you'll notice is that the Daishin Ken, which I can't think of the translation off the top of my head, but the sword could actually be stored in the left hip. Now, here's the thing. While there is a slot, there is space in there, you can actually put it in there. But the problem is, it doesn't snap, it doesn't clip, it doesn't, it doesn't use friction or anything. It just kind of sits there, and as a result, it comes out. So, while it does fit in there, it won't stay in there. That was actually something I thought they could have brought over that, even if they didn't give us the shield, they could have given us that. But for whatever reason, they, they chose not to. I mean, how much would those little tiny one millimeter clips on the end there, how much would that really have increased, increased the price? I mean, really. Something that's kind of similar, though. So I'm just going to get rid of the shield, because unfortunately, I think the other reason they got rid of this is because the, uh, the shield actually doesn't get stored anywhere. The only place it gets stored is on the back of the Shinkano. But, you know, mm, whatever. Anyways, the other thing, which is actually common to both of them, is because of the transformation, the legs could turn a little bit. Not much, but they could indeed turn. Although, because this is the Zord Builder system, of course it's going to have the same ratcheting. They, the, the joints, the combining joints actually look different. You see it's, it's, a, it's a rectangular peg thingy right there that fits into the back of the bear's butt. But um, because of the transformation of the Shishi Origami, which is the red line here, because of the transformation there, it does have a little rotating joint above the knee. So that was something else that was similar between them. However, there is one final thing that is a huge difference between them. And I'll show you what it is right now. And yes, by the way, the helmet could still come off. Um, the origami were designed to not only have an animal mode and a combined form, but to also transform into what's known as a badge mode, which would show the kanji of each Shinkinger. Kanji being the, you know, the, the letters that are used in the, the Japanese uh, language. Each one of them could transform into badge mode, which is why this was an $80 toy and why this is under $50. The transformations are similar to go back and forth between them, but there is no possible way you could get any of these into that other mode. The other thing that's similar is that with the Ryu origami, Ryu means dragon, you could always store the Shinkano's helmet in there, just like you can the Megazord's helmet into the dragon folding zord. This, like that. And there you have the Shishi origami in its badge mode. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of a pretty drastic change. And that is the reason why the cost of this Megazord is so little compared to the DX Shinkano is because, well, they removed a good third of the toy, which actually cut the cost in about half. Because truly, even now, the DX Shinkano would have cost $80 off the shelf. Okay, that's not even including the shipping and handling that we professional collectors love to deal with every single year. It's not even including that. This is MSRP, $80, $79.99 thereabouts right there. The Samurai Megazord was, what was it, $35 to $40, something like that. So, yeah, they cut about half the cost by removing the third mode. As a matter of fact, and this is strictly because of the transformation process, the only one that can actually form its badge mode from the Samurai Megazord is the Turtle Folding Zord, simply because... The animal mode is so similar to its badge mode, and because those pieces fold up in the exact same way in order to form the arm of the Megazord. So this is the only one that gets anywhere near badge mode. And I should probably address it while I'm here. There was a drastic...
drastic, by far the most drastic difference between the dragon folding Zord and its original Japanese counterpart, the Ryu Origami, well, let me put it to you this way. It's day and night. This is what it looks like in the show. This is how it acts in the show. This is what Bandai America gave us. And no, just in case you're wondering, the Daishin Ken does not fit anywhere in here. And honestly, why would you want to put the end of a sword up your... Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Biggest drastic difference. That's not to say that all the other folding swords are this drastic, but this is the biggest change between the animal mode and uh, of the animal mode of the Zord Builder system and the DX version that came from Japan. So, what's the difference between the Samurai Megazord and the uh, DX Shinkano? Good question to ask. Difficult to answer. I'll be honest and say that this review in particular is really challenging me on the objectivity that CollectionDX.com is well known for. We do the reviews, we might sprinkle in a little of our opinions here and there, but for the most part our policy is you're supposed to stay objective, don't let your personal opinions slip in on things, don't let what you see in the show or what you see of the toys, what your personal opinion of it is, don't let that cloud your judgment. In the case of the Zord Builder System Samurai Megazord, this is a challenge for me. And the biggest reason for this is, well, I've had the DX Shinkano for going on four years now. And it is, as I've stated previously, my favorite of the Origami Mecha System from Samurai Sentai Shinkanger. I've had this thing for four years, and this, in my opinion, best embodies what the system was supposed to do. Not that it's a triple changer, although that is certainly part of it, but because it actually transforms and looks like folding paper, like somebody made a, a porcelain casting of a paper dragon and a paper lion and things like that, and then turned it into a toy. This, the DX Shinkano does that, and it does it the best out of all the others that I've reviewed. This one, hands down, no questions asked, the best at doing what it says it is. Oh, and it's also a triple changer. The badge mode was extraneous, but nice to have around. And, you know, again, Japanese culture. And you needed some sort of fancy way to show off this is what each Shinkinger's um, elemental thing is. You know, they needed a little companion of some kind to, to pull out once in a while when they had the budget for the special effects. And so now I'm being asked, four years later, to cast this aside... And look at this as a brand new toy, as a standalone. I have to evaluate the Zord Builder System Samurai Megazord on its own merits, while the whole time ignoring the high quality craftsmanship that is the DX Shinkano. Not an easy thing to do, because I am rather attached to the DX Shinkano. So this is, this is a challenge for me. And this is also, by the way, Bandai America that we're talking about as well. Now, I'm going to address this now so that I don't have to with the remaining folding Zord reviews that I'm going to be doing later on. So, this is the notice. This opinion, this will be, you'll have to remember this for each of those other reviews as well. The good old days of importing Japanese toys and slapping a lightning bolt on it and calling it good are gone. The financial collapses of 2008 made that so. And even before then, it was a bit of an issue. 2006, we started feeling it. 2007, we really felt it. 2008, the markets crashed. It was a big issue. And it still is a big issue. The markets are only recently starting to claw their way back up. But it is nonetheless still very prevalent. This is 2013. Five years later, we're still having to deal with this, okay? So, at this point in time, collectors... Parents, little kids, you can more or less give up on ever seeing the original Japanese versions imported over and sitting on American shelves for $50, $55, $60, okay? That probably will never happen as long as Power Rangers is on the air. You're just going to have to deal with it just like everybody else. Now, Bandai America knew this in 2007. They knew this. That is why, and it took several years for us to realize this, 
But that is why the, oh Jesus, the Deluxe Drive Max Megazord was created. And it wasn't based off of the DX, the DX Gogo Gatai Daiboken. It was a completely new toy because it was cheaper. Yeah, it was larger and people found it distasteful in the extreme, as did I. But that was truly was Bandai America's first attempt to give us a 12-inch tall transforming Megazord that did more or less the same things that the Japanese versions did, while at the same time eliminating the $70, $80 price tag that the DX Daibokan had way back in 2006. Now, since 2007, when Power Rangers Operation Overdrive was on the air, Bandai America has, in a limited way, in a very limited way, reissued the original Japanese version with reduced paint applications, change of materials, you know, eliminating the uh, vacuum metalized plastic, things like that, removing light and sound, removing motors, things of that nature, which they had done in the past, but not nearly to the degree that they do now. And those, of course, were all cuss cutting measures, but the differences are those other toys that they removed all those things on were already cheap enough that they didn't really have to modify stuff, and they could still sell it over here for a bit of a profit, and yet still provide us with a good quality toy. Again, that was on a limited basis. So, here it is, 2011, and there is no way on God's green earth the DX Shinkano could have been imported over with no modifications. Whatsoever. That, that, that is just impossible. In 2009, when the DX Shinkano came out, $80 without bringing a sweat. It is a triple changer, and it did have to do a bunch of other things. So even though, even then in 2009, the price tag was kind of, whoa, 65, maybe 70, I would have accepted, but not 80. You know, that was, that was kind of crazy. And I can tell you right now, every single parent in America would have said exactly the same thing two years ago when this thing hit the shelves, okay? Imagine if this was the DX Shinkano imported as is. No way on God's green earth would any American parent, British parents, I don't know, Canadian parents, eh, have gotten a DX Shinkano for $80, the Samurai Megazord for $80. Would not have happened, okay? I promise you that. If it wouldn't happen in 1993, it would not happen here either. So, Bandai America is having to straddle a very, very fine line between providing quality toy while at the same time providing something cheap enough they can actually make a profit. Because, you know, they do have to keep themselves in business. They don't have to be extravagant about the prices. Let's be honest, this is just under $30, okay? They don't have to be extravagant about it, but they do still have to maintain high quality. And as I started out this little cautionary tale, this is Bandai America we're talking about here. Collectors, you know what I'm talking about when I say that. On the other hand, with that little cautionary tale aside... While importing an $80 toy would be impossible in the financial world as it is today, let us not assume that going to the other extreme is any better. This thing costs $30. The quality of the design that was imported from Japan, and I'm not talking about the toy, but I'm talking about the robot itself, how it transforms, what materials it's made of, Bandai America could still easily have released a $50 transforming Megazord. Okay, maybe it wouldn't have to be a triple changer. I've got bugs about that, but as a collector, I understand the need to reduce the cost. So, okay, eliminate the triple changing aspect of it. It won't be missed that much because, believe it or not, it's not used beyond this toy, beyond this robot. So, eliminate the triple changing function. Okay, eliminate badge mode. Taken care of. But you can still make this a $50 toy. The plastics that are used are... They're okay. But in some cases, hollow bits really don't like that. This this plastic, it, it feels cheap. I, I can't... It's still ABS, but it feels cheap. It feels thin. It feels like it's going to break really easily. These are four to six-year-olds we're talking about, by the way. So that's a major issue. Perhaps the biggest example of this, and again, I can understand why it is they had to change it for the transformation, but that looks absol next to nothing like, the, like it does in the show. Okay, next to nothing. They could easily have made the tail flip over. Okay, that would not have been an issue. The peg hole that's used for the knee, 
that could still have been there. They just had to make this little section fold open a little bit. They could easily have made this next section, even, even if it didn't go all the way back. I mean, they, they could easily have imported or made a different next section on here, okay? This thing, no excuses whatsoever. It feels cheap. It looks cheap, okay? Transformation, whatever. But getting it into animal mode, it should at least have been able to open up its tail a little bit more. Now, granted, as a cost-saving measure, and also to make certain the tail doesn't get lost, I said it right there, to make certain the sword doesn't get lost, they turned it into the tail, which... If the sword looked different, if the dragon transformed differently and looked differently, it might have worked. Or, better yet, try and find some way of connecting the sword underneath here in some way so it's kind of hidden out of the way or something like that. And maybe, maybe a little bit sticks out the back, okay? Or maybe have the sword go in farther. I'm sure there's, there's probably a lot of hollow space in there that they could have stuck the sword further in there. It would have looked weird, but... They could have conserved, and by the way, there could have been a little bit of plastic they could have removed out of there. Saved, what, two, three bucks right there. So there's a couple of things where they tried to cut corners, but then at the same time they reduced the quality and it didn't really make a lot of sense. Ta Speaking of cutting corners, this thing. I do not understand how it is that this arm, and, and, and the other arm as well, why it is that arm tilts back and it never goes forward. It never goes straight up and down and it never goes straight forward or backwards. I don't understand that. I really, really don't understand that. And as I've read online, it is also not possible to remove this joint and then play around with it. You can't because, well, it can't be removed from there. You can't unscrew the thing there. It is molded in that particular position or at least the, the joint is designed, it was specifically designed to do that. Why? I don't get it. Bandai America, write me. It, it, I want you to get one of the Bandai Creation, whoever it is, guys, that you have over in your little factory, wherever it is it's located, I don't know, I don't care. I want you to get, contact me and tell me why you felt compelled to have the arm do that. I know this is a very small thing, but considering how little articulation there is in this thing to begin with, unacceptable. I don't get it. I'm really that just flamoxed, I believe is the word. I don't I'm I'm not certain. Just I don't get that. I really, really don't. What what's the purpose of doing that? It ratchets every forty five degrees, as it should, as it always does. We don't have a wrist, we don't have a oh oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, um this has a wrist. This doesn't have a wrist because of how it transforms. So here's my question. Why couldn't they have uh, introduced a, a swiveling um, elbow joint so that, you know, the wrist would be able to turn side to side, but the joint would be up here that it would turn? Why couldn't they do that? Why couldn't they afford it? It didn't even have to ratchet, really. But I'm getting off topic. Oh, hey, here's an idea. How about waist articulation? Why couldn't they have had a ratcheting something or other sticking in there? You want to put a Zord Builder joint in there, Put it right there so you can separate the legs. Maybe do a reissue of the Wild Force Megazord or something like that. And then, you know, have have torso swapping like they did way back when. I'm getting off topic. But, again, why is that there? That's not a cost-cutting measure. That's a stupidity measure. Really, really is. Speaking of cost-cutting measure, there is this thing on the back, which obviously is going to get used later on. I'm not going to tell you what for. But anyways, yeah, there's that thing right there. Uh, another cost-cutting measure. Why isn't the sword able to fit inside there? You've got space for it. Look, there's, look, look right there. There is a gap. There's a space right there. Why would you put that gap there if you're not going to be putting the sword in there? How much more expensive really would it have been to have that fit there? Not to have it fit up like this. That doesn't work because that's only dealing with friction. Little, little touch and it, it goes all over the place. Why does this not snap in place? Explain that one to me. I don't get it. So, there's actually a bunch of little things in here, and I'm not going to go over each and every one of them, because I'm already taking a lot more time on this than I was planning to, but it's kind of a tit-for-tat thing. They kind of tried to change things to make it simple, but at the end of the day, they changed it in a way that didn't make any sense. Now, yes, I understand having the... Uh, 
the lion folding Zord's legs built into it that way. It looks a little strange, but on the flip side of that, but one of the common complaints that existed with the DX Shinkano was that it had no thighs whatsoever. It just had this little it had this little plastic thingy right there, and then this section is painted. That's painted in some way. So that was one of the things that a lot of people, including myself, weren't exactly thrilled with. Like, we didn't hate it, but it's like, why would they do that? You know, give, 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 the, give the man some legs or something like that. Now, there is one thing I want to point out, and that is that the Samurai Megazord was improved in one way, and that is that it is a little more better proportioned. Like I said, the legs are down here, and it was nice to have kind of a thin waist on the Shinkano. But it was kind of a disproportionate beast. While the, the torso here has been slimmed, like the, the red section has been slimmed upwards a little bit, I'm exaggerating, you can see how much space it takes up here. They actually gave it a, a they cut down a little bit of the waist, they sacrificed some of the waist so that the kind of the bottom of the lower torso was kind of brought upwards so that they could actually give it some legs. And you can see their waist sections are more or less in the exact same place. So that's actually one thing I've heard about the Samurai Megazord that was actually good, is it has kind of more humanoid proportion to it, or human proportion, I suppose. But, you know, on the other hand, his head is really, really tiny. And I mean really tiny, it's almost not there. The helmet is really tiny and small, for, for no apparent reason. So that was one thing that the Samurai Megazord did, changing the proportions. That, that was actually something that actually gave this some good praise, even from collectors who had the original Japanese version. Another thing they changed is that for later combinations, and even when the, if you get this toy just by itself, or if you have to deal with other combinations, one thing that the Shinkano could not do, at least not very easily, was stick the, uh, the helmet back inside of the Ryu Origami. Now, the Dragon Folding Zord does take care of that, and they intentionally designed it so that it would fit, okay? So they actually did, this is one of the few occasions where they fixed something, and it worked out well for the Samurai Megazord. That didn't work out on the Shinkano, because you could put the helmet back inside the Ryu Origami, but it didn't fit together quite that well, and you're always nervous it was rattling around on the inside there. So that was actually a case where Ben America actually made a good modification, so, you know, that, that was good. Changing the proportions, I agree. It does, it does look a little better, and hey, it actually has thighs on it. But for the most part, the other cost-cutting measures didn't really work out that well. Some of them are really frustrating. Some of them kind of make sense. It looks weird. So the Zord Builder Samurai Megazord is kind of a case of swapping one problem for another. Yeah, they took care of this one thing, but then they created this new problem. Yeah, they eliminated this particular feature, but then they added something else that didn't make a lot of sense either. So it's kind of tit for tat the whole time. As a final thought, though, I want you to consider this. I am 30 years old at the time of this recording. People often ask why it is that an adult collects toys. Um, why do people collect coins? Why do people collect cars? Why do people collect clothes? All right, none of your damn business. But I am 30 years old. This is a reality which has been brought to my attention in recent years, odd as it may sound. And I've noticed, I've actually gone back and looked at some of my reviews, and I've said, this toy was good, or this toy was not good, and this one does these things, and it's a really awesome gimmick. All the while, kind of forgetting who I was talking to, and who I was representing. I consider myself an adult collector, but I have to remind myself that this is a toy meant for somebody almost three decades my junior. And so the question is not whether adult collectors who have seen these kinds of toys for decades will like it, but rather... Will a four-year-old like it? Will a five-year-old like it? Will a six-year-old like it? That is the question that I, have to, that I have to remind myself of from now on. That is something that I have to keep in my mind, and I must admit I have been rather negligent in, in some of my reviews. I have found them personally distasteful because I have seen transformable toys from 10, 15, 20 years ago that were designed much better, despite 
the changes in the economy and blah, 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 blah. The reason I can look at this toy and say this would have done well as a $50 toy as opposed to a $30 toy is because I know it can be done better. Make the plastic a little thicker. Paint applications are actually not that bad. I will mention, though, that it was kind of sloppy of them that they didn't paint up the kanji symbols on e either of the legs. Even, even if it is one-sided, you know, it would be a little more screen accurate, you know. These are details and qualities and things that I have witnessed in other toy lines. And while I do compensate for things like Transformers Masterpiece or Transformers Vinyl Tech versus Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1, those are completely different franchises. It's still stuff I've seen over time. So, the question ultimately is, is this a good enough toy for children? Most begrudgingly, I must say yes. It is a good toy. Is it the best toy that could have been made? No. Is it the best toy that I remembered when I was 11 years old when Power Rangers came out? No. Is it going to break? Some places it will. These horns will probably be the first thing to go. Despite the fact they're made of soft PVC, there's an awful lot of give in here. These are going to be twisted and turned, and it's going to get stepped on real easily. Now, some pieces like these legs, these are designed to pop off, okay? So there have been allowances made for little kids to hang on to it. Despite my frustration between the 2009 version and what this is, it's still a toy that can be played with. Now, some things, thin plastic, quality of materials, paint applications, those things do need to be addressed, and it could easily be marketed as a $50 toy, yes. But, kids can play with this. Now, if you're to do what I haven't done yet, by the way, if you put these two side by side, which one are the kids going to run for? Probably this one, because they're not going to know the price, but they're definitely going to be able to see. You can do a lot more with it, okay? That's what this is going to give you. This is going to give you higher quality. But if I must judge this thing on its own merits, then the answer is yes, the Zord Builder System Samurai Megazord is a good toy as it is. And so I am putting a hesitant recommendation into the Zord Builder System Samurai Megazord. Good enough for kids, not for collectors. Especially if you know the differences between this and the original Japanese version. Speaking of which, for you Japanese toy connoisseurs out there, believe it or not, Bandai America listened to us on this issue, and in 2012 and 2013 did release a reissue of the DX Shinken O for American audiences. I believe it is a Toys R Us dot com exclusive. I know it's kind of a taboo thing to advertise one online store while you're actually promoting for another one, but unfortunately, Toys R Us dot com is the only place, the only place in American stores where you can get the DX Shinkano as the Deluxe Samurai Megazord. Here's the thing, though. It is $80, okay? And it looks just like the original Japanese version. I've spoken to people who have the Deluxe Samurai Megazord. By the way, this is not the Deluxe Samurai Megazord. This is the Zord Builder System, okay? This thing was specifically designed to interact with Bandai America original products, okay? Get in there, that joint system. Oh, God. So this is the Zord Builder system, okay? This is not the deluxe Samurai Megazord, okay? This, on Toys R Us, is the deluxe Samurai Megazord. So don't get them confused. And literally, the only difference between the DX Shinkano release from 2009 and the deluxe Samurai Megazord of 2012, the only difference is that legally, Bandai America was required to put a little paper band around the box. The box, the instructions, the careful watch your fingers labels are all in there, okay? It's exactly identical. But legally, the only way they could identify it as a Power Rangers product is if they put that little paper band wrapped around it, okay? So, yes, Bandai America did hear us, and they did release this. Now, they did not release all of the other origami, but they did give us, at the very least, the deluxe Shinkano. Uh, Deluxe Samurai Megazord DX Shinkano, okay? So, your prayers have been answered in regards to that. It gives you a leg up. Good for kids, not for collectors. This is Ava Unit 4A for CollectionDX.com.
signing off.